Okay, so just to bring you all up to speed here, um, this is me reading a excerpt from my mother's memoir for the first time. I've never read this book because there's a lot of sex in here, and as much as like I fully embrace the fact that my parents were swingers and they had a lot of sex. Obviously, I was raised in a sex positive family. I am a sex positive person. I work in the sex industry. I have a sex positive podcast. Um, I felt like I didn't need to necessarily read about my mom's um, oh God, no. exploits in detail, but I'm going to do it now for you. So um, here we go. <laughs> oh, It's my life it's being embarrassed by my family. <clears throat> All right. The door was opened by a seedy 60-year-old with thin gray hair and teeth that flashed with gold fillings when he smiled. Hello, sweetheart, he crooned. I'm Sydney. Come in. Come right on in. This was obviously Dee's sugar daddy. I was beginning to get cold feet. What on earth is my date, or whatever they're called, going to be like? I saw Dee, a voluptuous, tardy blonde, standing next to an armchair. Cooey! What the fuck is that? She said, <laughs> giving a little wave. Wedged into the armchair was one of the fattest, most repulsive men I'd ever seen. He rose ponderously to his feet, a cigar as thick as a banana in one fist. This is Bill, Sidney said, guiding me over to my $50 daddy. Sidney must have seen the look of despair on my face, for he immediately poured me enough vodka to stun a horse. I gulped it down like lemonade, determined to get blotto as quickly as possible. We sat down to a lunch of salmon and champagne, which cheered me up a lot. That's either, I like salmon. Then came the show. Dee led the romp, giggling and wiggling out of her clothes, a real pro. By now I was roaring drunk, but I still fell out of place. I mimicked Dee's strip tease as if it was some child's game of follow the leader. When we were down to bra and panties, I had to go to the bathroom. Dee followed me. Realizing that this wasn't at all my cup of tea, she said, Darling, you know you don't have to go through with this. If you want to, you can call it all off now and split home. No chance, I said. Stiff upper lip, never say die and all that. I've come a long way, and besides, I really do need the money. We <laughs> wriggled and giggled our way back into the room, and after a few squeaks, winks, and hoots of laughter, perched ourselves on the two old men's laps. Conscious that time was passing and that if I drank any more, I was going to pass out, Dee pushed me and blubbery Bill into a darkened bedroom and shut the door. I couldn't see much, and the room kept going around and around. Thank God it was all over in five minutes, just as Vicky had predicted. Instantly, Bill lay back down and began to snore. Despite my drunken condition, I scooted out into the empty living room and got dressed, wondering how I was going to get paid. I needn't have worried. When I opened my bag, it was there in five-pound notes. I escaped into the gray winter's afternoon, hailing a cab on the embankment. The next thing I remember was the cab driver waking me. I was home. I tottered up the stairs and fell into bed. When I awoke a few hours later, it all seemed like a bad dream. I reassured myself by taking another look at the money. Hello, composite. I said to myself, rolled over, and went back to sleep. Composites are like the modeling composite. The modeling. Oh, okay. Okay, I was not. I was not getting that. So <clears throat> I'll get a better one. Another one for you. Give oh, it to me. Okay. Well, I just want to point out the fact that that is. Um, so, mom. You, uh, you were, as, as we say nowadays, you were doing an in-person sex work service. Yeah, I needed the money. I only ever did it once, but, um, I was quite, I was quite good at fat old men because when Hum and I went to the swinging parties in Amsterdam and everything, a lot of the people there were unattractive. Mm. Um, so you ended up being a goddess of love and just fucking them all, you know. Mm. And then you floated above. You floated above their ugliness. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's interesting, because I did not know that you had ever um, had sex for money. But, you know, I'm, I'm as, as, as shocking as this might be for some people, I, I'm not that shocked and don't actually really care that much. But um, how did that make you feel? A little bit richer. A little bit richer. But, like, did you feel, like, how did you feel afterwards? Did you regret it? Did you feel shameful about it? No. Or, no? No. I mean, we, I needed the money. No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I all for, like, I, I'm super positive about sex work in all its forms. So I'm definitely not somebody who's going to talk down about, like, any form of prostitution. Yeah, but I wasn't going like to, that. I wasn't going to do it again. <clears throat> I mean. Right. 
So then you just went to orgies and then had sex with unattractive men for free. We'd been doing that beforehand, I think. I can't remember when we went to Amsterdam and all those swinging parties. 